Hey, hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inkis and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be covering lens uh, and that lens is I-550. Uh, there's one before that, uh, that simpler version of it is I-510, we're going to cover that in some separate, uh, separately in a future. But for now we are going to be sticking with two for I-550 lenses, uh, one of the latest drives, so uh, we're going to be doing again three part video. We're going to be uh, commissioning the drive and uh, running the drive in a uh, local mode. And uh, then we're going to do the 2 3 wire control with the remote speed control. And then after that, we're going to be doing a uh, 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 MOP control and also a, a multi frequency setup. And that would generally more or less give us an idea about the drive, how to work with it, how the parameters work, and pretty much progressive from there on. Obviously, there's a ton lot more into it, but for general use, this will be sufficient enough. So, without further ado, Let's get started. Yeah, so all wired in and powered up, and I've been playing with this drive uh, quite a bit. And guys, I'm telling you, this drive is packed. And if you are with the parameters, with functions, and Jesus Christ, there's so much. Uh, to read the manual is like seven eight hundred pound pages long so but one the good thing is the lens has uh, uh, narrowed it down to more general which is probably about 60 or about, about 70 80 percent of we're going to use and then narrow that down in a 32 page manual i'll leave that in a manual in the description below uh, if you are just for the basic use not the basic use there's quite a lot there uh, but uh, for general uh, applications you will have all there in all those 32 pages so before we get started, uh, one thing I'm going to mention, I do use a safety uh, uh, additioner, safety, uh, safety controller here on the bottom. And uh, one thing is for sure, if you don't have the safety controller and the cap is missing, you will pretty much be seeing this, uh, the, this situation on your keypad and your system will not work. So uh, that's something that you would be aware of it. So I do believe there's a cap on it. I never had one without one. So, but if you do, un Come on, get in there. Another thing is this cap in here has to be powered. So it does that, as you can see down there, I have a 24 volts coming out and I'm also using the grounding as well in here to power this unit right here on the back. So this is pretty much what it looks like. I have a SIA as a plus and a GS as a minus and also, uh, also SIA and SIB having a little jumper there or across. I'm not going to be using the safety circuit for this, but this is just to bear in mind, guys, if you have this unit and uh, your system is on a, the, what you just saw on the screen, this is the problem you are having, that your safety uh, your safety circuit is uh, on and it will not let you do pretty much anything. Believe it or not, it won't even throw an error on your screen. It will, uh, even when you go into a, um, when you unplug this guy, it will say you more or less they are okay when you start it it will actually run the frequency run everything but it will not just run your motor it's just nothing's going to happen it's very weird the way they've done this because if this is blank and there's nothing on the, the, the cap needs to be on it there's a connector block in here it will let you run the drive but it will not run your motor and it will not throw any errors on it which is very weird the way they set up but nevertheless do bear that in mind so right in the bottom you have a, a, a motor connector down here Right in here you have a temperature connector as well down there, we're not going to go through those at all. Right up here at the top you have a, a, a relay outputs and this, this guy in here, this is going to be your uh, connector for all sorts of can open and all sorts of other remote controls. And obviously the power here goes from the uh, here in the top. So that's pretty much all the controls and uh, we are using the basic, basic panel, do a bear in mind, these, uh, these units in here, they can be changed to all sorts of different things. So as you can see, I have a, a standard unit on here, but this can be unplugged and uh, more or less a change to whatever you're trying to do. There are all sorts of options you can be added to it. As you can see, I'm using a, um, and there's two lanes in here, which is very confusing at the beginning. Guys, if you see down here, these, these, these uh, digits, uh, this, this writing in here is pretty much, it is uh, for this uh, first lane in here, which pretty much tells you what, what it is. And then if you unplug it, right here on the other side, as you can see, if we can zoom in, it tells you what everything else is. So do follow these diagrams, how it's plugged in. So nevertheless, I will be uh, talking you through in upcoming videos, but it will be very difficult for me to show you 
uh, where the things are. Just follow these these uh, names in here, and that should you should be uh, well on your way. And as you probably noticed in here already, it's got a uh, pluggable uh, unit in front. I like these. I'm not a fan when they do this, but uh, it's, it comes with a fairly cheap price in here, and then you have all sorts of like the switches in there for cans and other bits and pieces that we are not going to even touch. So. Uh, there we go, and as you can see down there, I unplugged it and it went into an error. And to reset it, just click the stop, and stop works in a normal basis, stop works as your uh, reset. So uh, next up, let's have a look at the, how the screen works. Oh, for the screen, uh, as you can see, I already, uh, as I've been playing around from, uh, from uh, uh, local modes and things like that, as you can see, I am in local mode. So uh, you have a start, stop button here, back, enter button, and you got up and down arrows. This one in here will go, uh, you can select if you are in local control, you can go, and even if you are in remote control using digital inputs, you can even use that as your frequency. But again, it will be in upcoming videos. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, going be between uh, reverse and forwards. And if you are in remote control and you by any chance wants to want to jump onto for the for the quick local control, you can click on it and click onto it, and the alarm will flash, and pretty much will be that uh, error in here where it says on there it says pretty much I am in local control, uh, the other controls has been rem uh, 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 removed. So pretty much that is a regard when it comes down to that. So in the exit that you just do that and it will exit out of it. Once you are in the menu, you have everything designated into the groups. And when you are into the groups, they go into the call, uh, into the thingy called, uh, I would say, uh, like into the bit mode. In the bits, and each bit will represent something. The good thing is right here on the uh, top right here, it sort of tells you what each thing is. So uh, if you click on one of them, and as you can see down here, this is a... Uh, you can select between keypad and uh, this is basically uh, where you can set uh, select or how you're going to be controlling the drive of, uh, regarding the terminal inputs so uh, and that's pretty much it and, and, and that's how you go around select which uh, bit you're in and then you can go into it and then some bits will have some uh, sub bits and some some will not so uh, it's like this guy as you can see x is down there it will have extras under that bit, as you can see, one, two, three, four, one, well, one, two options in there. So yeah, so that's pretty much quite straightforward. And that's it. Has got a uh, how many groups? It's got it's got seven, eight, uh, eight groups, and it, they are packed with information, guys. There is ton. So that's how the front keypad works. So next thing, let's jump on to a factory reset. And for the factory reset, what we need to do? We need to go to the primary group seven. And the first parameter in there is going to be 701. And 701, just select that to one, basically it says on here, right in here it says on start. So uh, enter that one. And there we go, as you can see, that quickly reset everything back to factory reset for this specific firmware. Do, uh, guys, do know, remember, uh, understand that there, there could be di different uh, manufacturers, like when the drives maybe sometimes built for somebody else. They could have different firmware, so we might not relate. In rare, rare occasions, it might not relate what it is in the manually in some instances. It very much depends on this guy in there and how the firmware has been updated. And that can be done via the software. We might be checking out in the fourth video. I'll still yet to decide on that one. So that, ladies and gentlemen, this is, as you can see, I'm a remote, and then, and then we just need to hold the set. Just to save all the settings. And uh, whatever reason, it didn't it done that. So uh, as you can see, we are in a uh, remote control. As you can see, everything's changed and things like that. So next, let's get get on to commissioning the drive. So for commissioning the drive, we're going to start with uh, how we're going to be controlling the drive in the first place. So let's go straight for the parameter group two, uh, two hundred. And in there, as you can see down there, flexible I.O. or a keypad. Let's go for the keypad. As you can see, my set is a flashing at all times because it hasn't really uh, saved all the parameters. It's, it's sort of accepted them, but it hasn't saved them. We're going to save them all in the end by holding enter button for three seconds. You can save them straight there. So uh, the next one is going to be two, uh, 201 or one. So that one is going to be our uh, frequency. I already selected that one to a keypad. So as you can see, there's several options here. Select that to keypad. The next option is gonna be a, let's go through the list. 
So that we've done in there. And then we're gonna quickly check the mains voltage. We should be fine with that one. That's gonna be in a 2.0, oh, uh, let's just leave that one. Two, 208 and that should be at uh, zero. And that stands for a 230 volts. So uh, the next one uh, we're gonna check as well. We're gonna might as well uh, while we're here. Let's exit and go for the 10. Every uh, minimum frequency and uh, maximum frequency is a 50 hertz, which is all right. And then obviously as well, let's just change the deacceleration to one second. That's what we're gonna be needing. That's what I'm usually like to use one second for the testing. Uh, set that one and then 21 is obviously the deacceleration. That's acceleration one, acceleration two, no, acceleration one, deacceleration one, sorry. So, and the next one is going to be 306 and overload selection. Uh, where the selection basically we need to choose. You can choose that to go straight to the third group. And that is under 306. 306 and that's and 306, 301. And in here you pretty much can choose by default. It is on heavy duty. Uh, so uh, it is for more of a, a, a higher load uh, systems, uh, whatever the applications. We should lose like a fans and things like that. So uh, a light, light, uh, light duty will be fine as well so we have to put by default we are in a uh, heavy duty which is uh, fine in here so and the next one there's obviously there's a quite a lot of it as well you can do but I just, i'm just only going through what we really need the next one is going to be the p to uh, p uh, p uh, let's exit into 23 and in here we sort of need to select what sort of uh, motor amps are my ones are a can uh, um what do I have in there? Uh, 1.03 amps. So, can I? No. Could you, is there a better way of doing this? No. Well, that just sucks. All right, let's just try to get it get down to a. Uh, sorry, guys, this is dragging on. Come on, speed up. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So we were at uh, 1.03 amps. So let's so, come on. There we go. So that will be our a uh, motor current. But you can still select as well maximum uh, your maximum current, how you want your maximum overload current for the inverter. That, I'll, I'll leave that for you guys again. You can select that when uh, later on. I'm also going to skip that part in there. And the the, the next one is gonna, we're going to have to check our a. Uh, for the for um, how our enable commands, so uh, P four hundred and four oh one is going to be our uh, is basically as you can see enable inverter right there on top, and it should say true. So basically, it's enabled at all times. So uh, if it's not true, then it's not gonna uh, not gonna be enabled and not gonna run. So we're gonna check that one. Another thing we're gonna need to do we need to make sure the run is on true as well, not on digital input. So we collect that on, on uh, true. And that's the, that's the two things we're gonna need to uh, select as well, because otherwise, if you don't select run on true, it will not work from the keypad properly, it will not work at all. And that the, the next ones we're gonna jump on is there is, uh, for what we all, basically for what we are gonna need, we're gonna jump on the, a, where is my a motor parameters? A lot of pages in there. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go straight to the group uh, to a uh, back to three. I don't know why they did a lot of that. And then let's go for 320. Ooh. And in the 320, uh, 04, and we quickly check the RPM. That one is, uh, we're gonna change that. It's, it's really, when you select this data correctly, it's really good for the auto tune we're gonna do in a minute. So uh, I am on, where am I? 395. So that's a little bit. So that one, so the next one. Five uh, frequency should be 50. Thank you very much. So that is a power. It's almost there. So I am 0.8 and then 1.8. Oh, I am 1.8. So we're going down. 0.18 kilowatts. So, oops. Look how fine you can do this. 
And then uh, the seventh is going to be our uh, voltage. That should be 230. Yes. And the eight is going to be as going to be our a uh, power factor. So uh, let's change that. My one is really bad. Which is 68. My one is. All that information you can find that on your data plate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do. So we're pretty much all done. The only thing we're going to need to do is go to parameter uh, P327 to do our auto tune. And to do the auto tune, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can do it uh, the energized way and you can do it the non energized way. The non energized way is going to use all your data you put in. And we'll do all these maths uh, with that. Or you can do an energized way, which is actually quite long. We're not going to be doing that. But you can do go into a uh, 27 and go into 4 and select that to 1. And it will, it will take approximately, I don't know, about 3 to 4 minutes. After it does all sorts of things with the drive and it will enter that data uh, in there. I've already done that off the camera because it, it took so long. I, uh, it, it literally about 3 to 4 minutes and, and just all you need to do. Uh, enter one and then uh, once you exit uh, it will, as soon as you enter one uh, all you need to do if you go in or show in this enter one and, uh, and then just press a start I'm actually going to do that on a camera but I will uh, uh, skip this part when it gets to it and there we go as you can see it starts doing is a business I quickly get you into it and then we're going to cut it here because it's just that's a boring part you don't want to watch but you probably can hear already he start doing all sorts of noises and sounds and this way he is doing is maths come on jump to percentage bar here we go so here's the percentage bar let them finish and we're back here we are we are coming to an end once you finish all you need to do press stop and if you go in here, uh, if all went well, that should change back to zero. Yes, so it's all good. So the only thing left to do now is we are pretty much uh, ready to go. So uh, by clicking start, here we go. Runs very smooth for the basic, for, for, for the uh, standard carrier frequency. And there we go, and that's pretty much that. And can you do that change away in here? No, you can. All right, let me. So uh, here we go, and then accept that one, and your motor will go in reverse and show you that that minus sign. And that is, ladies and that is, ladies and gentlemen, that will be it for our uh, local control. I know this video is dragged on, but this drive is very needy, and it requires quite a lot of attention to set up. But I, but the way it works and how smooth it is, and it is a very high quality drive, so I definitely wouldn't let you down if you have one of these. So ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and it did help you out and get you where you want to get. So let's shut it off. And uh, so yeah, if you like the video, please smash, smash that like, do subscribe. If you like the, if you like what you do, what we if you like what we do in here. And uh, yes, thank you very much for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video.